Sure. So my name is Armela and I live here in Tirana, Albania. It's a small country in Europe. I've been working as a software engineer for more than seven years, but the last four years have been only working with Angular. Excellent. So, All right. Okay, well, your slides are beautiful. They're showing. <laughs> yes, I'm so proud. <laughs> Great. So uh, I've been working recently a lot with forms, both reactive and template driven. It's a large subject, but we're going to cover a few topics today regarding form validation. First of all, why we need form validation? Because most applications require some user inputs and we cannot always guarantee that the input is valid. For this reason, we set in place some rules before sending data to the backend. This will improve the user experience because errors will be shown instantly. And then another advantage is that it will reduce the load on the server. So when we talk about validation, we can think of a scale. There are some validations managed in front end and some other validations managed in the back end. And the combination is always optimal. So let's have a look on a little bit more details on what type of validation handles the front end and the back end. So uh, from my experience, front end will be managing required or optional fields, uh, format validations, such as length or a pattern match, and some other validations that make sense to the user, such as password and confirmed password should have the same value. On the other hand, the backend will be managing the business logic validations and all the other validations that require some data to be determined if a value is valid or not, such as is a name unique. We need some data from the backend. By managing validations this way, we make sure that the scale is balanced. So next we have a quick look on how Validations work in template-driven and reactive forms. Each of them manage validations differently. Template-driven, since it's the template that carries the heavy weight, is managing validations through directives in the template. While in the reactive forms, it's managed through functions. Each of them have their use cases when they are optimal, but usually for medium to large complex forms, we go for reactive forms. Uh, and the reason is because, first of all, writing functions it is easier than writing directives. And if we manage a large and complex form only with directives in the template, eventually it becomes hard to maintain. So that's why we chose the re reactive approach. So if we were to categorize the validators, we would go for three categories. We have built-in validators that come out of the box. And then we have synchronous validators, which is basically a validator function, and async validators, which is an async validator function. And the difference between the two last is that the first one will just bring a validation error, and the second one is going to be either an observable or a promise of validation errors. And after we've discussed the validators, let's consider a case where we have a field username. And for this field to be valid, it should have a value, a mean length of three, and it should only contain numbers and letters. I've also added another validation condition that the first and the last letter should be the same, and it also should be unique. And as we discussed before, the three main categories, this is how we would organize these validations for the username form control. We're gonna take advantage of the built-in validator. And for this case, we will just need to write two custom functions for, uh, for the first and the last letter to be the same and the value to be unique. So here we have uh, defined the synchronous and the sync validator. So the sync fa synchronous validator is just considering the value of the form control and returning null if it's valid or a validation error. On the other hand, the async validator is using the user service for this example. It's sending a request to the backend, and then after considering the response, it will determine if this username is available or not. 
And after we have uh, declared, implemented these validator functions, it's time to organize them inside the form control. So let's suppose we have a form and the username is our form control. So the first parameter will be the value null for this case. And then we will have to erase where we will list all our validators. In the first array, we will list all the synchronous validators, including the built-in validators. And in the second array, we go with a list of all the async validators. And for this case, we have only the unique validator. So it's quite easy and manageable, even if these forms grow larger and we have to manage more complex validations. And with this, I want to thank you for your attention. If you have something, you can just write me. I have a blog and just drop me a message either on Twitter, email or LinkedIn.